Thank you, panel. We'll just give everyone another minute just to log in and join in, and then we'll begin. Thank you. I know we have a lot more guests than it looks like because people watch on other channels, and of course, it'll be recorded for others. So please bear with us and thank you. Okay, let's begin. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening um, to all the uh, friends who are joining us and uh, a huge thank you and welcome to our panel as well. Um, big thank you to Nikos and Anna for again helping set this up. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Giorgio Palandri um, and, um, uh, and Maduka, Maduka Nakajima. Um, uh, it's been a an honor really it was a dream for me to have a webinar on this subject because um, when i first met japanese colleagues and uh, madoka uh, on the um, international hydrocephalus society um, and realized what they do in terms of how well they manage nph in japan there's so many lessons to learn from the from our japanese colleagues from in so many areas so it's it's an absolute honor um, Giorgio is uh, one of the CSF core members and one of the really true experts in this field who's been uh, very, very helpful and supportive in developing the CSF section. And I cannot thank you, Giorgio, enough. Um, thank you, Giorgio, for joining in from Bologna in Italy. God bless you. Um, Maduka, a huge welcome to you. Uh, I should say, um, Dr. Maduka Nakajima's son. Um, it's, a, it's an thank absolute you. honor. Uh, Maduka has joined us from Tokyo. He's an associate professor from uh, Juntendo University and has a particular interest in uh, management of normal pressure hydrocephalus, particularly uh, expertise with the use of lumbar peritoneal shunts, which is something that we in the Western Hemisphere, and perhaps even Southern Hemisphere, do not do much of. And we're going to look into these perhaps um, no justifiable reasons and maybe more cultural reasons why this variation has happened. Uh, and I, for one, welcome the greater use, uh, the more uh, common use of uh, this technique for, for helping our patients with NPH. So huge welcome to you both. Uh, and uh, we'll put some questions to you at the end, Maduka, possibly during the presentation. Uh, and uh, may I remind the people joining our friends that um, are welcome to put your questions in the Q&A section um, so we can put them to Maduka and Giorgio. Um, and uh, welcome to you all again. Giorgio, I'll hand over to yourself uh, for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mansoor. It has been a pleasure for me to be in the CSC section. And it is also a pleasure for me to introduce our attendees to Professor Madoka Nakajima. He is a, a respected authority in the field of neurosurgery, and he is specializing in LP shunts. And with a wealth of experience and expertise, he has made the significant contributions to advancing this surgical procedure. LP shunting is a technique used to address the IMPH, and Professor Nakajima has dedicated his career to refining the procedure, focusing on improving patient outcomes and minimizing complications. Through his research and clinical practice, Professor Nakajima has explored various aspects of LP shunts, including patient selection, surgical techniques, and post-op care. His innovative approaches have enhanced highly the safety and the effectiveness of the procedure to the benefit of uh, countless patients. Professor Nakajima's expertise extends beyond his surgical skills. He is a prolific author. He is publishing his findings in reputable scientific journals, and he is sharing his knowledge through presentation at academic conferences and lectures. His contributions have garnered recognition with the medical community 
and have solidified his reputation as a leading authority in Alpishans. He is known for his compassionate approach to the patient care and is dedicated to improve the lives of individuals suffering from IMPH. His commitment, his expertise and passion make him an invaluable asset in the field of neurosurgery, inspiring and guiding fellow professionals in the pursuit of excellence. So we are very honored, Madoka, to have you here and please show us your presentation. Thank you, Giorgio. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Madoka Nakajima uh, from Juntendo University, Tokyo, Japan. So thank you for inviting me to this webinar. So I'm very honored with the opportunity. So I will do my best. Uh, today, I will talk about the Lumbo Peritone Shant. Uh, I have no COI to disclose. So uh, there are two types of hydrocephalus communicating and uh, non-communicating between uh, ventricles and the subalachnoid space. So of course, we have to choose an appropriate shunt method according to the type of hydrocephalus. In case of non-communicating, LP shunt is not used. The VP shunt uh, can be applied for any type of hydrocephalus. Uh, therefore, VP shunt is established as a gold standard and widely accepted with a lot of evidence. According to the National Administrative Database, uh, between 2007 and 2017, and three quarters of INPH patients in United States were treated with VP shunt, while only one quarter were treated with LP shunt. However, according to a nationwide hospital-based survey 2012 in Japan, uh, more than a half of uh, INPH patients were treated with LP shunt. So LP shunt has accumulated already a very good background the technique is simple and easy as an extension technique of the lumbar puncture. We can perform it uh, without general anesthesia and the post-operative scars are small and not visible outside the crosses. The most important merit is no intervention to the brain. So less invasive approach is preferred in any surgical field, uh, same as a shunt surgery. The ventricular catheter placement is associated with a roughly 1% risk of symptomatic uh, intraparenchyma hematoma. The slide shows delayed ICH after ventricular puncture. This is irreversible complication. The patient are more willing to accept lumbar surgery than cranial surgery. And previous report, the LP shunt has not generally uh, been favored by neurosurgeon because of high failure rate and the possibility of symptomatic overdronage compared to VP shunt. So is there evidence that really substantiate such fact? So we debut the literature for LP shunt to clarify the appropriate outcomes. So Giorgio and his team have a wonderful report, a systematic review and meta-analysis of the literature demonstrated that there was no difference in outcome between the surgical methods. There were no difference in the vision rate uh, between the two groups. Uh, but the LP shunt was found to have a lower infection and mortality rate than the VP shunt. So, however, from the four reports that cited the results uh, from the LP shunt, 
uh, three were from Japan, and uh, two of them were from our institution. So the result may not be unbiased. According to a national administrative database, a length of hospital stay is shorter with LP shunt compared with LP shunt. Uh, that made the LP shunt is increasingly being used in Japan and surpassed the VP shunt use. This is why more than 80% of NPH patients at our hospital received LP shunt. So today, I will present some points that can make you re-explore this option as LP shunt treatment. So I will talk on these uh, items. I uh, already told you uh, about the background. The beginning of LP shunt. So CSF play a dual loop. For managed intracranial pressure, we expected therapeutic, therapeutic effect of uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension. For promote CSF production and absorption, we expected therapeutic effect on INPH. The development history. To begin with, LP shunt have a long history. There were different historical attempts until uh, reaching the present solution. The Ferguson 1898 for the first time connect the subarachnoid space with a dominant cavity using a silver wire passing through a hole drilled on the vertebral lamina. The Cusing 1926 reported 12 cases undergoing the shunting using the silver coated shunt tube. The Matosum made uterostomy connecting it with a plastic tube from the vertebral canal. Nevertheless, due to obvious folding, rupture, and the obstruction of the shunt tube, the plastic tube and LP shunt were indeed abandoned. With the improvement of the shunt tube materials, as well as the margins of the shunt device, uh, equipped with a bulb, the usage of the LP shunt gradually become widespread. In addition, these uh, LP shunt placement were performed by the open method of the vertebral arch resection. Then Simon Hakim first identified the iron pitch syndrome in 1957. Then the Spetsla and Kuana performed simple practitioners LP shunt using the silicone tube instead of the other plastic material to avoid these complications. Has not been uh, frequently used in some part of the world. The technique has been often misunderstood for effectiveness and avoided as a surgeon were not familiar with it. One reason is that there is no reported standardized technique and procedure is uh, considered to be complicated. So the surgical technique of LP shunt, I would like to show you uh, our LP shunt technique. So I will describe the uh, four necessary stages of LP shunt treatment. The step zero, indication and the contraindication. These were the general indication and the contraindication that were applied. The good potency of spinal subarachnoid space has to be confirmed. A simple algorithm of indication and contraindication in hydrocephalus treatment. It is contraindicated for non-communicating hydrocephalus. LP shunt should also be avoided 
if uh, there are brain malformation in the posterior cranial fossa and in the cervical, but cervical, uh, cranial cervical jump, vertebral junction. And uh, it's the case of chiari malformation, vaginal impression, and the uh, syringomyelia. So if we MRI show the severe narrowing of the spinal arachnoid space, uh, following the inflammation in the subarachnoid space or uh, owing to degenerative disease of the spine. So LP shunt would eventually block CSF flow, risking myelopathy or the under drainage. However, this is not an absolute uh, contraindication. On this pathophysiological background, uh, the LP shunt can be applied in INPH once adequate communicating between CSF space is ascertained. So I will show uh, you uh, our surgical video. Maduka, we can't see the video at the moment. Oh, now we can. Thank you. Luca, we're just seeing the slide with a small picture of the video, which is repeating in the corner. Okay, now we can see a video. Thank you. Feel free to comment if you like, Maduka. Welcome. Thank you, Nakajima-san. Madoka, if you want, you can also comment uh, the video while we are uh, watching it. I'm sure the audience can ask questions later. This is fine, as you wish. Thank you. That's good.
I really like the retractors you've got in the wound there. It looks like a mini Sugita retractor, but in the lumbar region. <laughs> Very good. I think that's the end of the video. Is that Maduka? Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry. No, no, this is fine. Thank you. Feel free to comment as you wish. Um, I know there will be a lot of questions, certainly from Georgia and I, and I'm sure the audience, more importantly.
Okay. Uh, this uh, movie is uh, finished. So some useful tips for it patient. Uh, first, the inserting the caster into the appropriate position. So second, uh, place the bulb straight and not deeper than one centimeter under the skin to facilitate the shunt pressure setting. Third, placement of abdominal caster avoid uh, dead space to prevent caster migration. So usual uh, difficulty uh, is LP shunt is the proper placement of the caster in the spinal subarachnoid space. Uh, the Paramedian approach is used to target uh, the inferior edge of the spinous process from the medial side of the intervertebral joint from one vertebral level below. An advantage of the paramedian approach is the easier placement of the caster into the spinal subarachnoid space uh, compared to the median approach. If the puncture was uh, done blindly, 60% of entries were higher than the intended location. So we try to place the caster along the midline of the spinal and subarachnoid space assisted by a guide wired caster uh, under the fluoroscope guidance. Uh, this method allows even inexperienced surgeons to easily place the caster uh, in the correct position. So we try to uh, uh, ultrasound guidance for it be improved success rate to uh, decrease the needle uh, lead direction and the traumatic top. When a static ultrasound guidance is used, visualization of the spinous process is the key element uh, to mark the needle insertion site. When real-time ultrasound guidance is used, the needle is inserted under the direct visualization using the paramedian approach. It is also possible to avoid the complication when the caster tip is misplaced into the uh, subdural space. After lumbar caster insertion, the flow of CSF uh, tend to decrease and stop after humidity uh, of discharge. And the insertion deeper or pull out a uh, little uh, does not improve the flow. So when subdural, so extra arachnoidal placement is suspected. The catheter position is close to the spinal canal wall. Contrast medium can be injected through the catheter for verification. The pooling in the Epilacnoid space uh, prevent the contrast from mixing with CSF. Uh, contrast uh, washout was poor and the caudicuina uh, structure could not be confirmed. After repositioning, the contrast uh, CSF is relatively uh, uniform and the cauda structure can be seen. So advantage and disadvantage of LP versus VP shunt. We have stated that the LP shunt has a great advantage and that it is not invasive to the brain. However, I believe uh, there are other positive and negative aspect to LP shunt. So negative, uh, higher incidence of uh, symptoms due to overdrainage and more shunt malfunction uh, due to tube occlusion. The positive, 
easy to predict post-operative outcome from the tap test. So LP shunt are considered to have uh, many complications due to overdrainage. And in favor of programmable pressure valve and a siphon guard system used in combination. So in EU, uh, U-shaped connector can be used as an integral part. So nevertheless, uh, there have been cases of complications. So he was operated with a Celtus valve and gravity valve attached, uh, post-operatively improving and the valve setting were level two at discharge. On a regular follow-up three weeks later, clinically with clearly a persisting improvement. His CT showed big subdural effusion. This required an immediate raise of valve setting to level four. On his next regular follow-up about a month later, his condition has slightly impaired mainly his speech and cognition. Uh, there was a light uh, latent hemiparesis and the CT show a big left uh, temporal chronic subdural hematoma. So valve was immediately closed level eight and the bow hole surgery on the left side was performed with immediate uh, clinical improvement. In the immediate post-operative period, we start with a high pressure setting for all cases, considering the existence of CSF leakage to the extradural space. When there is a sign of low CSF pressure, such as headache, uh, we check the head CT uh, with careful attention to bed rest level. We lower setting by two, three centimeter each low at a time by referring to high convexity cell size. The target setting is determined by the weight and height of the patient. The follow-up for LP shunt. So check uh, catheter position by taking lumbar X-ray. Check the current pressure setting at the outpatient clinic, considering the possibility of uh, accidental pressure change. When there is a suspicion of shunt failure, it is effective to check the shunt patency by puncture the reservoir with a 27G needle. So we believe that such post-operative management can prevent many of uh, uh, complications and improve air patient outcome. So let's move on uh, to uh, perspective for the management of INPH with LP shunt. In the future, post-operative management method may be upgraded with uh, telemetric pressure monitoring in LP shunt. So this report demonstrated its effectiveness in idiopathic intracranial hypertension patient. It is also important to note that the intracranial pressure can vary even within the same shunt wall pressure setting. Uh, usually, IAP increases as BMI increases. The patient with higher BMI has higher IAP, as shown in the slide. It seems to me that we must do more to take into account the shunt setting and also the patient's activity status as well. We recently reported the result of an analysis of Japanese symphony study in patient with MMEC score of 26 
ORS. The result also showed that tap test assessment accurately reflect a cognitive function prognosis after LP shunt treatment. Tap test can sensitively predict improvement in post-operative MMC score following LP shunt intervention. This may be due to the fact that both LP shunt and tap test use a similar patterns of cerebral spinal fluid drainage. Therefore, I recommend the LP shunt as the first line treatment of INPH. So in conclusion, in the diagnosis and treatment of hydrocephalus, it is a prerequisite to ensure that shunting is performed without surgical complications. Because of lack of evidence uh, from the literature on the shunting technique and uh, standardization among centers, it was not possible to conduct a systematic review to determine the optimal technique. With attention to safe and uh, reliable techniques, we hope that the LP shunt will be widely and effectively applied to the patient without any differences in outcome among surgeons and centers. So thank you for your attention. Thank any you very much. Madoka, uh, truly outstanding presentation. I think that uh, we have some uh, questions from the floor. Um, Vijay Yabalan is asking, uh, I think that you already mentioned this uh, during your presentation. However, he is asking, can you comment on the two valves because you need a gravity valve and the strata valve? Could you explain a little bit more why we need uh, these two valves? Okay. Uh, yes, this is a, uh, our institution uh, used the tandem, uh, this uh, gravity valve and uh, program able valve. Uh, the, you know that uh, patient uh, have a, many uh, complications for uh, the over uh, I think a siphon guard system is needed. Uh, so I have a, uh, another slide. So can I share? Sure. Yes. So this is uh, uh, the how to decide it, uh, the setting of the ball. So the, we considered the these intracranial pressure, hydrostatic pressure, interabdominal pressure, and. Um, in the upright position, oh, the ICP decrease and IAP increase, uh, even if there is uh, no shunt. So in shunted condition, uh, hydrostatic pressure, ICP, IAP, and the valve setting are balanced. Uh, if the valve setting is too high, ICP decrease is insufficient and the symptom may not change. Uh, if the valve setting is too low, so excessive uh, rowing, the ICP may cause over complications. So valve setting can be calculated using this formula. But efficient, 
uh, lumbar subarachnoid space pressure change due to the shunt effect unknown. This is the shear cell drainage. So, however, it is uh, assumed that uh, lumbar subarachnoid space at the tip of the proximal catheter is always under the positive pressure. So, the sit in the position, we can see the uh, CSF. So, although the subarachnoid uh, sub space pressure uh, decreases slowly uh, due to the drainage effect CSF uh, by LP shunt, so I think we need to do uh, more work on the setting up the program able bubble. Uh, uh, considering the siphon guard system. So, Epicent needed the, the, these two type, uh, the programmable and uh, uh, siphon guard system. So I, uh, I'm like uh, gravity ball. Okay, thank you very much. We have another question uh, from Ipeleng. Uh, mm. Good day. Uh, what about the difference between uh, lateral uh, left or right? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, regarding oh. the tubing tract. I uh, like the left side, but uh, it is okay. Uh, some patient have uh, uh, the scar and the left side, I use the right side. So, on the, I don't mind it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, An anonymous here. Everybody introduce uh, the spinal catheter together with the metallic guide. I think it can be gentle. Introduce it just sliding it without the guide. Once you pass the tip of the needle and confirm it is going up in the right direction. So if I understand well, and Masur, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this uh, attendee is suggesting not to go all the way through with the, uh, the metallic wire and, and then just uh, as you are entered the, uh, the spinal canal, uh, you go um, ahead with the, with the catheter. I, I think so. Um, and as an addition, I mean, I have sympathy with the question um, in the sense that, and I don't feel it's the main theme here at all, that there is so many ways to put your catheter in. You can do it blindly and it's fine. People do it. I, a vast majority of people I've worked with and worked for over the years in the UK. And, and I know my experience is a vast majority I've done blindly without x-ray. But then if you use x-ray, do you need to use a guide wire? And if you use a guide wire, the colleagues' anxieties, which we sympathize with, which I think we've discussed before, uh, Aduka and Giorgio, that, that and I'm, I'm not used to ever putting in a guide wire because you worry about the guide wire amongst nerve roots and have not used it before. So perhaps some comments from Aduka in the sense that, do we really need to do that? It, it's very careful it's very good very comprehensive technique you use in japan just like so many things uh, which is i'm in awe of but please expand on that if it's necessary and how important it is yes uh i use the guide wire with the uh cannula uh this is a commercial base the uh, metatronic uh lumbar caster this is a closed tip then uh insert the guide wire, uh, the ca catheter in the into the caster. Then the both we uh, uh, insert the subarachnoid space. This is uh, safe. Uh, you are worried about uh, the injury, the uh, spinal cord, but this is uh, just zero point four five uh, millimeter. The very soft. And very, uh, very soft uh, tip. Yeah. Soft is not, not so hard. Yes. Uh, I, I don't think uh, uh, and injury. 
Mm. And but look, can I is is the the shunt then fed through the guide wire like the mm-hmm. Seldinger technique, like putting in a um, mm-hmm. a, a VA shunt um, or, or or a venous pressure line? Um, you you put the catheter then to follow over the guide wire. Is that right? Mm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, you know that just the uh, the caster we can't uh, uh, see the uh, the tip. We can see that under the fluoroscope. Uh, it, it's visible the guide wire. Uh, I, I use uh, very useful. <laughs> I think this is sure. very useful. Sure. Sure. Uh, That's absolutely fine. Please, Giorgio. Another interesting question. Is there any difference if we direct the tecal catheter caudal rather than cranial? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. May yeah. we do the LP shunting uh, without using any reservoir valve? I think we already discussed this. Okay, so what, what about if you, you usually aim uh, in the cranial direction, but what happens if you direct uh, the catheter caudally? Uh, I, I, the caudally, the, some patient uh, complained uh, uh, radicular pain, that uh, the leg pain. Uh, I think it's not a good, uh, yeah, good way. <laughs> the caudal to the caudal. This is, okay. Better just, uh, uh, yeah. The uh the ten centimeter ten or the fifteen centimeter up. So uh, if it's a long uh links, uh it's not good uh the drainage for ESF. Okay. Uh, mm, I think this is a. Uh, usually I uh insert the L two three or three four. And uh, ten or fifteen centimeter up to. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Another question from uh, Chirag: In young patients with communicating but arrested or compensated hydrocephalus, what is the role of LP shunt? In such patients, do you always consider presence of papilledema as the requirement for shunt? Yes, uh, if uh, I, communicating hydrocephalus, uh, we you, you use it, uh, the air patient method. Okay. Mm. Mm. So you use it not only on IMPH patients, but also on uh, cases of arrested or compensated hydrocephalus. Compensated. So if okay. uh, the uh, third band. Go on uh, the uh, floor, the shift. The budget of the third ventricle. Uh, I, I, you, uh, first, uh, first of all, the ETV, the first, okay. and, the, and the next day, the patient. <laughs> okay. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, yes, this is a, a, another anonymous but very interesting questions. Have you noticed uh, any uh, secondary um, Chiari syndrome? Kathy? Chiari syndrome. If you, uh, during uh, your clinical observation, uh, mm-hmm. you noticed after El Pichant uh, um, tonsil herniation. No, uh, no, 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 no. 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 I've never experienced. Okay, just a co- just a comment about that, maybe Giorgio. It, it's it, in sympathy to people who ask that question around the world. It, it's something that people get very afraid of, and it was very very well noticed over the years when it was just simply a, a tube that would be put in for lumbar peritoneal shunts, particularly in in UK and around Europe. And the distal end only offered about five centimeters resistance. So when patients stood up, of course, then it was a different kettle of fish. And that we used to see it um, over the years. But with the new valves for lumbar peritoneal shunts, and I'm not putting a plug for 
Escalap or Mythgay and et cetera, but you know the vowels that we use it, and that you just don't see that anymore. Um, it's extremely rare. So it's just in sympathy to the questionnaire um, and in agreement with Madoka and yourself, sorry. Um, we know that it is very late for you uh, in the night, Madoka, but I would like to ask you uh, another couple of questions. Okay. Uh, what is the recovery after El Pishanting? Generally, what happens after this procedure to our patient? Sorry, uh, one, more, one more time. One more time, please. De Deco? Yes, Sorry. Uh, I mean, uh, what is the recovery process? Ah, recovery, ah, okay, the recovery, recovery process. Pro mm -hmm. uh, after the LP shunting. Yeah, you know that LP shunting is a very minimal invasive surgical procedure. So uh, that we prefer to use the local anesthesia and the spinal anesthesia, the sedation. So the effect of the anesthesia of uh, still present for the several hours after surgery. Uh, the surgery is uh, preferred in the morning, uh, perform, uh, perform, uh, performed in the morning. Uh, that by evening, the patient is free from the all uh, monitoring and uh, including the IVs, and they they enjoy the meal. Okay. The uh, the the next day we started the rehabilitation. Uh -huh. So then the one week after the discharge. Okay, thank you very much. We have another question uh, from Elizabeth. Uh, do you normally expect changes in the size of the ventricles? I understood no. it is not always the case. The successful is rather related to the improvement in symptoms. So I, I got my slide. Uh, uh, the show that uh, the, no, not the ventricle size, the the convexity uh, side, uh, uh, the, we uh, choose the setting the uh, above uh, so pressure. So I think there's a ventricle size, not so uh, many change uh, after the patient. Okay, so it's like in VP shunts, uh, we could say. Mm -hmm. the, the uh, different. Yeah, another uh, question from uh, Teokaris. In your experience, how fast does it work? I mean, when would you typically perform a CT scan to change the opening pressure? Is it as fast as VP shunts or function a little bit slower? Sure. I, I get, I know. It is difficult, difficult to do a question, but uh, I think a VP shunt, the LP shunt, and the Bouya shunt uh, is uh, different. Uh, so, um, okay. Sorry, I <laughs> do you usually do you usually see a clinical improvement immediately mm. after LP shunts, or you mm -hmm. think uh, you, you can wait a little bit longer? Yeah, this means uh, the just after the uh, LP shunt, uh, we uh, we think it's the uh, leakage, CSF leakage uh, from the uh, uh, catheter yeah. uh, insertion. So uh, it is, I think, the two, three weeks, uh, the leakage is continue. Then the, after one month, I set on the valve. Uh, ah, okay. And the, there's maybe three months to just uh, the setting, uh, uh, the so the VP shunt not so CSU leakage. Uh, I think uh, the LP shunt is uh, three months after or six months after uh, we set, uh, set in the bulb. 
uh, the good position. Okay, and what mm. about uh, the first CT scan? When do you usually perform the first CT scan after the operation? Yes, uh, the uh, next day uh, we check the CT. Oh, okay. And uh, one week after we check the CT, the one month after the, we check the CT. And the two, three uh, months after the, the, uh, the surgery, uh, we check the CT. So the, after the patient come to uh, my clinic, uh, the, each two or three months. So the first year, uh, I always check the CT. Mansoor? Giorgio Maruka, this is excellent. Um, I wanted to put a, a question, which I feel is perhaps the main one when I speak to British colleagues and European colleagues in the EANS or Maduka, and, I, and I'm sure you would sympathize with this, Giorgio. When we are used to putting a VP shunts for a long time or a particular valve for a long time, you get familiar with that valve, with that setup. Um, and we know the mental gymnastics of shunts is now so interesting, uh, particularly for neurosurgeons. It's much more cerebral now um, and more, more thought process. It can be so, so much thought process that it can be off-putting, but it's, it's, it's very attractive to, to many. And it, my question is around the valve settings to help colleagues around the world if they want to switch to this type of shunt or change because some patients don't want to have a hole drilled in their head. Um, some patients are not fit for a general anesthetic, be good for a regional anesthesia, like in this case and so on. And before I put my question a bit more accurately, just to paint the picture, when we're standing up, the pressure inside the head is, so most of us we now know is more minus five, minus six, something like that in the CSF. Sure. When we're lying yes. down, most of us, 12, 15, something like that. And of course, it's not one pressure, it's the waveform, which we're very interested in. Um, and of course, when we're standing up, <laughs> the CSF pressure in the lumbar area or thoracic area, you go from, from sort of plus 10 or whatever from lying down to um, mm -hmm. plus 40, 50, depending on how tall you are and where you put okay. the tip of your catheter, where the cord of cranial. So it gets very interesting. And then, of course, you've got the abdominal pressure. And, of course, with VP shunt, it's the length and your height, which, which people should take into account for the setting of the anti-gravitational effect. I guess what I'm saying is you go, uh, it, you have to look at the mental gymnastics of the VP versus LP shunt, and it's a different mindset. It's a different calculation. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in NPH, if you use a B Braun valve, let's say M Blue Plus, you might put the setting for NPH, start off with eight or nine, and put anti gravitation device as, mine, as 30, and then gradually lower it from eight or nine to even down to zero, and then anti gravitational to lower as 25 for someone average height. And you do it incrementally. But those are some good figures, um, I think, reasonable figures. What are your figures and recommendations for valves? For the settings, because this is, I think, what really will help the, the people who want to use LP shunts. Because some valves you can't put there. You can't, for example, if you put the abdomen, you can't press the, 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 the programmable, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, M Blue Plus valve. Um, and there's more than 170 different valves now, I think, on the market, maybe more internationally. Please share your experience about the valves and the settings. Sorry for the long question, but I wanted to. <laughs> You give the set, put the setting, and give you time. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's just a dif difficult. There are many uh, commercial bases the valve there. So the correct answer is that nobody knows. <laughs> but uh, I, I need. I think uh, that is necessary. The programmable and. Uh, Siphon guard system is a best match to for the efficient because uh, the I use the zero to fifteen 
centimeter uh, H2O, the gravity ball. Uh, the, you know, the Japanese uh, is not so high as uh, high height. And if uh, the, the uh, more highest uh, the uh, person, the zero to 20 centimeter or more, uh, this is uh, compatible. But uh, I don't know. Uh, but the, if and I, I, my paper uh, uh, the two three years ago, uh, I uh, so with the gravity ball uh, and and the programmable. Uh, Bob uh, may uh, pretend uh, may protect uh, the over drainage. So I think it is useful uh, this uh, the, now the commercial base uh, Bob, but uh, in the future. So we need a uh, monitoring system uh, is uh, much better than the, this system. Uh, when, sorry, Maduka, when you say monitoring system, monitoring system, uh, like a sensor, mm, uh, sensor the use, pressure. Yes, mm. and as more intelligent shunts come in, you can mm. see the waveform, see the pressure, read it, and have a lot better idea what settings to use and to learn from it mm. for the next patient. Um, but, but it would be wonderful if perhaps you could share with us later on, you could send it to us. We can put it on the website um, mm -hmm. without plug-in for other people's shunts, if Giorgio, you would agree. What are the kind of uh, recommended uh, hardware or settings that you use? Um, because when colleagues want to switch to lumbar peritoneal shunt, it's good for them to have an idea what hardware to use rather than, God forbid, mm -hmm. experimenting with a, with a, with a new Shant and then and then learning from there. Um, if, if I may say, well, I don't know what you think, Giorgio, before asking more questions. Sure, that's a great idea. <laughs> Maybe there's other questions. Sorry, Giorgio, that I uh, no, 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 no. question. That was a very uh, question. It's completely mind. fine and very welcome. Uh, so another question from Elizabeth. Any particular advantages or recommendations using LP shunts in a patient uh, with, the, with the new uh, anticoagulants? Anticoagulants. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, sometimes we stop the anticoagulant, uh, but the, uh, before the shunt, uh, it is not necessary uh, the stop. Uh, so because LP shunt is uh, so a small scar, uh, I I am um, uh, it is necess not necessary uh, the stop the anticoagulant. Uh, are you referring to mm. antiplatelet? Uh, drug therapy or anticoagulants? Uh, after the shunt? The before yes. the shunt? B before the shunt. Mm. Yeah, if patient had some other uh, the stroke, uh, the, the, they uh, used the anticoagulant drug. Uh, we we don't we don't uh stop okay. the, the, we continue to uh use the uh anticoagulant drug okay mm. i think this is very important so we don't want to give a wrong message but um Maruka, if it's things like aspirin and anti many people will say that's fine you can even you know do a micro or routine lumbar operation Mm. Uh, I know it's controversial, but there's plenty of evidence that it's safe. Um, or you can just stop it on the day or whatever. But a lot of people will say be safer, stop it a week before. But when it comes to mm, no, no, like, no, no. like 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 rivaroxaban, like 
you know, non-vitamin K anticoagulants like, um, you know, clopidogrel, uh, you know, strong stuff, would you not say it's better to stop it definitely yeah, like yeah. Week or 10 days beforehand? Mm -hmm. Some patients <laughs> will do this, but uh, not necessarily. Uh, yeah. I think yeah, I, I have no experience to the breed, breeding uh, the El Pichant. Uh, I think it is not necessary to stop the anticoagulant. <laughs> okay, Before I think the, this is a huge difference uh, between VPVA and El Pichant. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, before I, 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 Pichant, I, I, I stopped the uh, anticoagulant. Must say, I, in sympathy, I think it, many people are, perhaps would be right to be cautious when putting in a shunt, whatever shunt, uh, lumbar, ventricular peritoneal, when you have that period of you're adjusting. Uh, because what everyone fears is a hemorrhage, particularly a subdural hemorrhage. And uh, mm. if you've got a tiny bleed, that you could make it a lot worse when they've gone back onto something. Mm. So it's good to be cautious, perhaps. I don't know what you think, Giorgio and Maduka. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I, I <laughs> yeah. A chronic subdural hematoma, uh, the patient have a chronic subdural hematoma. Um, I, I, uh, it is better to the stop the anticoagulant. Mm. Okay. But, be, but before the shunt, uh, usually I don't stop the anticoagulant. Um, Sorry. But Giorgio, May I ask a question about why Maduka may, and you, what, you, what you think as well, why has there been such a variation between perhaps Western or American or European management of NPH um, in terms of prevalence or use of ventricular peritoneal shunt as opposed to uh, lumbar peritoneal shunts? Uh, I, I, I wonder, is, is it, uh, what, what is the, is it, is it cultural? Why is it cultural? I remember, for example, a long time ago, my trainees were saying, depended who they trained under in England, whether they used ventricular taps before aneurysm surgery, as you get access to the aneurysm, you know, want to drop the pressure and drain CSF, as opposed to lumbar drain. Um, now, the, we're all much closer and interacting a lot more. Why do you think so many more V and lumbar peritoneal shunts are put in because instinctively I would have thought it's better to put a lumbar peritoneal shunt and not drill a hole in the head. But our familiarity with VP shunt and managing patients and makes it so much more easier, certainly in our setting. Please, if you would comment, both of you. Madoka, you're <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. The patient come and uh, me. Uh, I uh, recommended uh, two type of the shunt, the VP, LP. Which do you like? So uh, that it is no differences of the outcome. Uh, the patient uh, like the, the LP shunt. Mm, I don't. I don't know why. <laughs> so, uh, but the, uh, the elderly person, uh, the INPH patient is um, elderly person. Uh, they don't. They have a uh, some disease for lung or cardiac. So the patient is no, no invasive. Uh, they want to choose this method. I think. Well, I think that your mm. question, uh, Mansouri, is really very, very intriguing. Uh, I, I don't know if there is a correct answer to this, but uh, I must admit, I perform VP and VA shunts. Uh, I must say that uh, from my strictly personal point of view, I find that uh, LP shunting is very respectful. Uh, of the patient, of course, uh, not having uh, to do with the with the brain and the risks 
uh, it carries on. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's very respectful. How uh, Madoka said at the beginning of the presentation, uh, of course, an hemorrhagic complication uh, is uh, um, is very rare, but uh, yeah. it's catastrophic. Could be catastrophic to the patient. Uh, I must also say that uh, um, uh, 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 it is difficult, for example, for me uh, to shift to help patients since I'm not uh, used to complications of help patients. I mean, when you start doing help patients, of course, every good surgeon knows that you have also to deal with your own complications. And so you, you must be taught how to handle complications also. So, uh, I mean, in the future, my, sorry about that. Uh, I mean, uh, I hope to have the chance to send one of uh, our residents uh, to, to Madoka in Tokyo, uh, at oh. Juntendo Hospital, uh, University and Hospital, and then uh, make them uh, learn from the masters uh, how an LP is uh, is uh, to, to be done and to be followed during uh, during time. Thank you. Uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, but, th thank you, Madoka. And thank you, Giorgio. I, I think it's a, perhaps a, more than one reason, isn't it? That we we only do a finite number of operations, and when we when we do even a large number of a particular operation for a particular condition. It's often our familiarity as a team, particularly as a team and the backup, that perhaps, you know, how we recommend a procedure to a patient. But I, as one person, I'm only a drop in the ocean. I believe that in a CSF speciality setting, it's particularly for NPH, it would be very good in the near future in, in across Europe and the world, really, to be able to offer to the patient uh, both options very well, very well. Um, for example, you know, why, why I would offer it is if, let's say, they were driving, let's say, uh, which is a rare a scenario, then and they don't want to stop for six months, then they prefer the LP, then we offer that. But it, it means that being very, very good and familiar in a, as a team in the hospital with, with both techniques. Um, but I would say that eventually, you, you know, you either get really good at one thing or the other. <laughs> you get familiar, you know, you, you, you either get really good at playing the violin or the piano. Very rare, you can do both very well. But um, I, I think it's been very, very important for us to learn more from the Japanese experience. And I will join your resident, um, Giorgio. I, I will be there even earlier. Uh, I, I thought I could do this operation quite well, but I, I, when I watch Madoka doing it in, in videos, this is really, really nice. So uh, I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll see you in Tokyo soon. Anyway, back you. to you. Okay. So thank you very much. I think uh, it's quite time uh, to wrap up this uh, session. Uh, and before Mansour uh, is uh, saying the final words, uh, I would like to thank you uh, very much, Madoka. Uh, for being here with us and for answering our questions. Uh, thank you for your uh, excellent presentation. Uh, of course, we hope uh, to see you soon in the future. And uh, I want to remember to our attendees that uh, in Barcelona, uh, we will have uh, um, the CSF uh, section meeting uh, on Sunday uh, and uh, on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, please join us uh, at the ENS uh, Congress. Uh, we would like to welcome you in person there. Thank you, Giorgio. Thank you, Madoka. I'm, I'm not sure I want to say much more except a huge thank you to, to Madoka for, for joining us and teaching us so much. And, um, and we, know, we hope, actually, Madoka, you come and join us in Barcelona for the big EANS meeting um, and the big, you know, uh, reminder to all the audience, uh, we've got a fantastic EANS meeting in Barcelona, which is the annual meeting and, it, and it's a superb venue uh, as always, but it is even better than uh, 
I would say perhaps most, starting on the 24th and running to 28th of September this year. And we've got our joint parallel session with the pediatric section, uh, which will happen um, on the Tuesday, I think 26th of September, and as well as our own parallel session on the Wednesday, 27th of September, with lots of good talks and abstracts being presented. Uh, and we're hoping to have a pre-Congress symposium, which will uh, take place, I think, on the Sunday, just before the inauguration of the meeting on the 24th of September. And we'll have a series of talks and some very good case presentations and hopefully our first CSF section meeting. Um, so a warm welcome and invite to all of you who can attend. And uh, once again, a huge thank you to, to Giorgio uh, and to, uh, to Madoka. Um, to Madoka Nakajima-san. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. And thank, thank you to all EANS, Anna and Nikos for putting for helping us. Thank you, Madoka. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.